Yeah, that's right, I'm wearing pink. So what? I'm secure enough in my personhood that I feel completely comfortable wearing a feminine color like pink. What, do you want to fight me about it? Go ahead if you're afraid of getting your butt kicked by a guy wearing pink. Come at me, bro. One and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Here we are with another bargain bag video, the bargain bag for October, even though it is pretty much the end of October. You might not see this video until November has rolled around, but uh, yes, that's uh, yet another symptom of 2020 being what it is. Uh, bargain bag is probably my favorite monthly feature to do on my channel, so it's like usually as soon as the first of the month hits, I am just right there to do my bargain bag video, but somehow it has migrated to the end of the month, uh, at least this month. So uh, yeah, it's just, you know, as I said, you know, 2020's craziness uh, has affected all of us in various different ways, multiple ways for the vast majority of us. But anyway, yes, bargain bag is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags from the late Skips Records and CD World. Uh, in between opening the two bargain bags, seven CDs each, I talk about a CD that I have found or that you might be likely to find in the bargain section of a music retailer near you. Uh, but anyway, before I get to any of that, I talk about the stuff that I uncovered in last month's bargain bags uh, to see if there is any uh, treasure among the trash. Colloquially speaking, of course, you know, I, I hesitate to call any music trash, but you know, and uh, by the way, if any of these CDs that I'm going to be casting off here sound just so irresistible to you that you want them for yourself, uh, let me know and in the, either in the comments down below or in a direct message on Twitter. We might be able to work something out. Uh, I'd be happy to ship them to you uh, free of charge if you want three CDs or fewer and live in the States. If you live outside the States or want more than three CDs, we might have to work out a payment for shipping. This batch is probably not likely to... Uh, tickle anyone's fancy, honestly. Uh, and uh, yes, I hold on to these CDs for about two weeks after the upload date of the video, which you'll see right down there. Uh, so yes, let's just give it a start, uh, starting out with my cast-offs and ending up with the, the keepers, if any. And I have, oh, three, four keepers this month. But yes, uh, first of all, a couple of Sade CDs, uh, a, a big name which has been unusual for Bargain Bag, uh, Love Deluxe, and the best of Sade. I already have the best of Sade, so that's that makes this one completely redundant. But uh, fair warning, with these two CDs, they are very scratched up. Uh, I actually found a couple of skips when I listened to Love Deluxe. That's the only reason I am getting rid of it, is because it doesn't play well, so you're probably not going to want it. And yeah, same thing with Sh the best of Sade. It's pretty scratched up. And then uh, three CDs by another relatively uh, well-known name in the world of music, The Gypsy Kings. Uh, we have Mosaic, Este Mundo and Compa, and they were, they're all pretty good. Uh, I have a Best of Gypsy Kings uh, compilation, and yet yeah, none of these CDs really moved me tremendously enough to really want to keep them, and they're uh, scuffed to varying degrees, not nearly as bad as the Sade CDs, but uh, yeah, if you like uh, world music, uh, Latin-flavored music mainly, yeah, these are up for grabs. And then we have a kind of a classical guitar duo here, Sergio and Odair Assad play Piazzolla. Classical guitar, uh, some of it with a Latin flavor. Of The first three tracks are a tango suite. So if you like Latin classical guitar. And then we have a an electronica or dance mix CD uh, a compilation called Future Rhythms. Not bad if, if you're looking for a an electronica or EDM dance party and you want to soundtrack it. And then we have... Uh, Oriental Lounge, Global Chill Out Lounge 3, and that's pretty much what it says on the label. Basically, yeah, world, world rhythms, chill out, uh, more on the ambient side of EDM. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Post-grunge alt-rock group called Loud Lucy. They were all right. Yeah, just didn't, uh, didn't really move me enough to want to keep them. And then we have, uh, this one was, it was okay. Uh, Mulberry Lane is the name of the group. Run Your Own Race is the na name of the album. It's a female quartet of uh, singers. Um, pop with a little bit of dash of country. Uh, their harmonies are really nice, wonderful. It's just that um, I have uh, three or four CDs by Wilson Phillips, and these ladies, just as good as they are, just remind me a little too much of Wilson Phillips, so I just didn't see any reason to keep this. And that brings us down to the four CDs that I'm probably going to keep out of this bunch. 
This first one was very, very unusual. It actually turned me off quite a bit at first when I listened to it. Um, it's, I believe the name of the group is Zero Hour, and the name of the album is Reservoir, and it's actually just uh, seven tracks. And I don't know if this qualifies as drone rock or noise rock, because I'm honestly not sure what the uh, sonic markers of those subgenres are, to be honest. So I'm kind of blindly calling it drone rock or noise rock. But yeah, uh, I think pretty much all, I think all the songs are uh, instrumental only, no vocals. Uh, but yeah, very the first track, uh, for instance, was just very this one kind of fuzzed out guitar chord, and I believe it was the same chord throughout the entire, what it was, it three or four minutes. So yeah, it turned me off at first, but as the album progressed, I kind of liked it. Some of the, uh, a couple of the tracks took on a bit of an electronic air to them. So I am going to keep this one and spin it a couple more times, because it, uh, it may grow on me. And then this, this band is called Jim Crow, and I, I made a joke about, uh, I'm not crazy about his laws, but thank goodness they're not on the books anymore. And this was actually the reason why they called themselves Jim Crow, is they are an interracial band. And uh, yes, uh, alt rock is basically what they are. And uh, it's just, you know, you don't see a lot of interracial bands uh, nowadays. Good stuff. Uh, I wasn't wowed by it, but I'm going to keep it and listen to it a few more, few more times. Uh, I don't know if I'll be uh, end up keeping it for good, but uh, they had some good stuff. And then we have the Hal Lovejoy Circus. <laughs> and this was kind of... Uh, Mm, alt rock, pop rock kind of stuff, with a little bit of whimsy in it. Um, I'm trying to think of who they reminded me of, and I cannot think of who they remind me of. I'm not really great at comparisons, honestly. But uh, yeah, one of their uh, tracks is called Get Off That, followed by the track Hot Pants. Uh, so yeah, the, the song titles are kind of whimsical, and uh, I'm going to have to get listen to this a couple more times too, but it was it was pretty appealing on the first couple of spins. I've listened, listened to it twice so far, and uh, what I usually am doing when I listen to most of my bargain bag CDs is I'm working, so I'm playing the song, the CDs in the background, so I kind of, I don't really totally absorb them at first, unless they really strike me. So uh, yeah, that, that's why my commentary on these is kind of vague, kind of a little light, but this one, these guys really caught my ear. They are a Canadian uh, alt-rock band called Odds, and I had heard of them before, but I'd never listened to any of their albums. And I really, really enjoy this one, uh, so much so that I am going to actively seek out their other albums. This is, I believe, their third or fourth album. Uh, but yeah, the good stuff. I mean, excellent uh, alt-rock. Reminds me of a bit more of a straightforward Bare Naked Ladies, you know, with, with not quite as much overt humor. Yeah, just kind of the same sonic basic sonic stuff when with Bare Naked Ladies in their like third, fourth, fifth albums, that uh, range. So, yeah, good stuff. So, yeah, four keepers out of 14 CDs, so not bad at all. But, now that that's over, let's dig into the first of my two mystery CD grab bags. It is stapled shut securely, so I don't know what's inside them until now. I just cut open the bag, in case you weren't paying attention. And then I give you, I give you guys at home, the audience, the customary peekaboo. You get to see what's in here before I do. Oh, I've heard of these guys, Revis. I believe is how you pronounce them. Uh, I guess I think they're an alt rock band, uh, po possibly post grunge. Places and oh, places for breathing. Good old glasses. Places for breathing. I don't know which album it is, um, but yeah, definitely listen to them. Then we have hmm, Randy and the Bloody Lovelies. Interesting uh, name for the band. Uh, yeah, I have no idea what these guys do. And uh, I am assuming that this is Randy. So, yeah, I'll be interested to hear this, obviously. I'm always anxious to, uh, unless I know it's something I'm not going to enjoy, I'm always anxious to uh, hear albums that are in my grab bags. Mike Hatch, uh, who is a guitarist, uh, Pentimento is the name of the album. Uh, I would assume Latin guitar. So, copyright 2001. So. There's almost always an interesting mix of genres in each of these bags. And we have Tim Williams, When Work Is Done, is the name of the album. Uh, looks kind of like singer-songwriter stuff. And then we have a CD that is still sealed in plastic. Uh, Solid State 14. My Superhero. 
Oh, I guess My Superhero is the name of the band because track one is called Solid State 14. So, 17 tracks. Yeah. Nice long track list there, so. It'll take a while to get through that, I would assume. Then we have... I don't know... Oh, Migs is the name of the band. You know, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, am I going to be risk using a racial slur on this channel? No. But Migs... M I G G S. I can't read. I can't read, read the title, uh, but uh, yeah. Looks like a twelve track or so. See, oh, produced by Phil Ramone. That, that was uh, one uh, month before last. Was a really odd indie album that was produced by Phil Ramone. So, interesting. Well, then we have oh, American Songbook series Oscar Hammerstein II. Yes, one of the preeminent songwriters of the Great American Songbook era. Lots of uh, good stuff. Billy Holiday, John Raitt, Bonnie Raitt's dad, incidentally. Dick Hames, Judy Garland, Joe Stafford. This is an interesting Perry Como, Louis Armstrong. Oh, this is going to be a good one to listen to, I think. So. That was a very interesting uh, first of two bags. Oh, something I forget, too, after the last CD in the bag. Hmm, that one went pretty far. Okay, now, time to talk about my Bargain Bag Spotlight CD selection for the month of October. Now this one might be stretching the criteria of bargain bag in that uh, you know when I start out my bargain bag videos I talk always talk about CDs that I have found or that you may be likely to find in the bargain section of a music retailer near you. To be honest I have never found this one in a bargain section not that I've necessarily been looking for it but uh, well there are two reasons for this. First of all I have been struggling to find CDs to talk about in my bargain bag videos each month, so you know I've kind of been running a little bit fast and loose with it anyway. But also, so many people have been unloading their CDs lately anyway, in favor of whether it's streaming or uh, going to vinyl, you know, moving back to vinyl. Uh, so what I have found in general in the bargain sections of CD retailers has been expanding anyway. So. You know, you may the next next time you go to a thrift store, you might find the CD in the one or two dollar section. Plus, it's just one that's been on my mind lately, and I just wanted to talk about it because it's just so darn good. It is the soundtrack from the Steven Spielberg movie Hook. Now, I personally love this movie. Uh, Spielberg himself isn't terribly proud of it. Uh, it's not one of his most beloved movies. It was kind of a flop at the beginning, but I think it's kind of developed into a bit of a cult film. But I have always dearly loved this movie and especially the soundtrack, uh, so much so that I just recently, part of the reason why it's been on my mind is I was recently able to spring for the 2CD Deluxe Limited Edition soundtrack, which I have been wanting for years and years. Uh, so yeah, I've finally gotten that one. So this one actually is redundant. So honestly, this one's up for grabs if anybody wants it. Uh, this is the original Epic Records one disc pressing of it that was put out back when the movie came out in 1991. And in my opinion, this is one of John Williams' last truly great scores. I say one of because obviously Schindler's List and Jurassic Park came out in a couple of years after this one. And of course, uh, his score for the first Harry Potter movie was absolutely fantastic and gorgeous. But I love this soundtrack because so many of the themes in it, uh, you know, the theme for Peter Pan, the theme for Neverland, and the theme for Captain Hook, have some, so much of a lyrical quality to them. And I found out after the fact that there is a reason for that. Uh, when Spielberg was first developing the screenplay for Hook, he was envisioning it as a musical. And uh, John Williams was obviously one of, uh, you know, one of Spielberg's long, long-time collaborators. He was one of the first people that Spielberg signed on to do the movie, to, to do the score. And so that's why so many of the uh, themes in the movie have a very lyrical quality to them was that you know, they were first conceived of as songs with lyrics. Uh, two of the songs actually survived as, you know, as actual songs in the final film. When You're Alone, which was a, a beautiful little ballad uh, that was performed about halfway through the movie. And uh, We Don't Want to Grow Up, which came uh, right at the beginning of the movie. But the rest of the uh, themes just ended up being instrumentals. But they are just fantastic. I love them. Uh, the theme for Captain Hook is this jaunty, mischievous kind of... Uh, uh, stomping almost a march sort of a thing. I just love it, you know? I, I love everything about the movie and, and the score. And uh, this soundtrack is re it's really kind of dynamic, honestly, this soundtrack is. Because at the beginning, uh, near the beginning of the movie, we get uh, some of John Williams' jazz roots because he started out as a jazz pianist. So the theme for the adult Peter, Peter Banning, 
is a jazzy piano theme. So yeah, it harkens back to John Williams' early days. And then, you know, but everything else, of course, is orchestral and in some cases lyrical. And uh, it has some of the best tracks, in my opinion, uh, some of the best themes, the, the, the Never Feast or the Banquet, that great theme with when you know the, all the the lost boys gather around for their uh, their feast their pretend feast that ends up turning into a you know their their imagination sparks it into a real feast that's one of the best scenes in the movie uh, honestly if you haven't seen the movie hook you've got to watch it it is just full of imagination and it full of childlike wonder and it makes you feel like a kid again watching the movie it's honestly it's fantastic you know and of course dustin hoffman steals the show as captain hook and Okay, I could go on and on about the movie, and I've been hinting at something that I'm coming up with. Uh, it's actually going to be possibly a companion channel alongside this one. This is not going to be about, about music, but it may be a vehicle whereby I can actually talk about the movie in more detail. So, yeah, spoiler alert, you might be seeing another channel from me very soon. So, I could talk about the movie, the movie in that channel, so I'm going to try and stick with just the album, because I have a lot to say about it. But one of the scenes in this movie, and one of the pieces of, mu of music in the score, is, in my opinion, one of John Williams' most underrated pieces of scoring in his entire career, and that is uh, the, the cut called You Are the Pan, which is when the Lost Boys first discover that this adult, you know, Robin Williams plays the adult Peter, Peter Banning, uh, is in fact a grown-up Peter Pan. It is just such a gorgeous and moving an emotional track just it just swells with emotion it puts tears in my eyes when even when i listen to it on the score apart from the movie and of course the scene in the movie brings tears to my eyes as well but it's just one of the most moving pieces of scoring by john williams since the farewell scene at the end of et i mean if you are skeptical about the power that music can bring to a movie watch the finale of et and this scene you are the pan in hook that will change your opinion completely but yes, this uh, as as you can see, I could go on 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 and on about this soundtrack, which is why I bought the two disc deluxe version. Uh, but this CD has all of the best highlights of the movie, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, as I said, I may talk about this movie in depth on my upcoming new channel, uh, which I will give you a link to it when when it actually launches. It hasn't launched yet. There's no content on it yet, so uh, I will. Uh, keep you apprised on that. But yeah, the movie is great. The soundtrack is just as great, if not a little bit better. I, I love John Williams, and this, in my opinion, is one of his, one of my top five, probably, favorite scores from John Williams. So yeah, fantastic, fantastic movie, and a wonderful, wonderful score. Okay, now for the grand finale, I guess, of this uh, video, opening the second mystery CD bag. Scissors. That one actually made a tap when it hit the ground. The staples weighed it down and gave it some heft. And peekaboo ICCDs. There was a, a few different colors here. I saw a uh, light green. Let's see, what do we have here? We have Dirk Hamilton with Suffer Up a Chuckle. Okay. Uh, this is just just for the title suffer up a chuckle is it's worth listening to honestly i have absolutely no idea what's on that cd but how can you not want to listen to an album called suffer up a chuckle then we have unreal i believe is the name my ticket home unreal i'm not sure which is the uh, title and which is the artist as some tends to happen with at least one cd in each of the bargain bags don't know which is the title and which is the artist Next one is The Parsons, Talking Water. I wasn't sure if it was Talking Water or Taking Water, but it was it's Talking Water. The Barnyard Boogie is the first track on here. It's a Sin to Tell a Lie. Uh, that is an old uh, Great American Songbook song. Oh, You Can't Judge a Book by the Cover. That's a, that's a blues song. That's the title of a blues song. So this looks like it might be an interesting... I, I have a, an inkling that might be one of the highlights of the next month's video. And we have Mila Drumkey or Mila Drumkey, Gathering My Name. I've never heard of her, so I will be interested to... Uh, seven tracks in that CD. We'll see what that is. And <laughs> here we have the first repeat CD that I also got in another bargain bag. So this one is up for grabs, I can tell you right away. Donna Lewis, 
with her album Now in a Minute. Yeah. And I actually kept it when it last appeared in a bargain bag. So this one is totally up for grabs. Pop rock, um, 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, uh, 1996. So mid 90s pop rock uh, fronted by a woman, obviously. When someone's first name is Donna, they're, they're usually a woman. Oh, and this is one that I already have. So, hmm, who can I send this to? Uh, Newton Faulkner, Faulkner, Hand Built by Robots. A very, very good album. Indie folk pop. Very good stuff. And the one questionable thing about it is you can see on the cover of the CD there is a Confederate flag. But it, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, he is British, actually. So that's just an incidental image on the... And this is from 2003. Oh, 2008. Actually, more recent than I thought. So... Yes, long before the um, the controversy over the Confederate flag that came up in recent years ever happened. So it's just an incidental presence on the cover. Don't let that uh, sway you. And I actually have the big 4x4 four four album cover wall art things of that album cover just because I thought it was such a cool looking cover. Confederate flag aside. And then the last CD in this bag. That one went about five inches further on the floor, just in case you were wondering. We have... Oh, Frente. I've heard of these guys. I've never listened to their music. So I don't know what what genre they they are or anything. So uh, this is giving me an excuse to give Frente a try. I've heard some people on some YouTube ch YouTube channels talk about them. So yes, at last I have a reason to check them out. So there you have it for bargain bags. And that'll do it for Bargain Bag for the month of October 2020. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for a link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.